I'm Mark Demolakis. I'm the principal percussionist of the Cleveland Orchestra. We are in one of the percussion rooms at Severance Center in the basement today. Um, this is our larger, larger room where we keep things that we're not using during the week. Behind us we have four octaves of tuned Thai gongs. These are very cool instruments. They go down from from low C, the low note on a cello, up to this little guy, which you can't really hear so much. This is the range of the collection of gongs. And then we also have right here, these are tuned cowbells, Amglocken, call them. Um, and we have three octaves of these set up like a piano, white keys and black keys, white keys, black keys. A lot of these instruments we got out of necessity because we, we, we went on tour with a piece by John Adams that needed these cowbells so, and these gongs actually. Thank you to John Adams for helping us acquire all these instruments, but for that repertoire we needed all of this stuff and it made, made a lot more sense to own it. We, we're lucky to have a large collection of mallet instruments, keyboard instruments here, um, woods and metals, vibraphones, which this is our newest, it's a four octave vibraphone. So again, we have this low C. Usually the range of the other instruments stops at this F. And we needed that range for Bear Lulu, which got canceled during COVID, unfortunately. But now we have the instrument for next time. Um, this is a xylo rimba. So it's a combination of those two instruments the xylophone and the marimba. So it has shorter bars, more like a xylophone, shorter and thicker bars, and it goes into that range. And then it also goes down into a marimba range. But the modern marimba is a, is a the construction is a little different. It's more of a resonant instrument. And this has a little more of a xylophone sound. We use this when we play messian a lot. And um, xylophones, we have a, great collection of vintage xylophones. This instrument is probably probably from the 30s, 30s or 40s. And the wood is old growth rosewood. So it was old wood when they made the instrument back in the 30s or 40s, so it's not replaceable. Um, it, it's repairable and it can be tuned, but the sound of these old instruments is, is far superior the wood instruments. So we're lucky to have a great collection here. And we use different ones depending on the repertoire. Certain things um, have a type of character that works better with some of the instruments than others. And it's nice to have a collection like, like this to be able to choose from. These are crotales, or they're sometimes called antique cymbals. They're metal, also set up like a keyboard. And there's also a lower octave of those, and then glockenspiels, and then song bells, which is like a glockenspiel, but an octave lower. They used to use them in movie soundtracks, old timey movie soundtracks all the time. Uh, we use them every year in Home Alone, if you come see that. Just to show you the xylo rimba, uh, it goes down to that low C. Now this xylophone, that's the C an octave up and you hear it rings a little less. That, that C is this. So it's shorter sound, that's more resonant. And then you come over to the marimba. Xylophone, marimba, and then this marimba goes down even further to the low C on a cello. So you could play all the Bach cello suites on that marimba, which, which we do as percussionists. 
And none of this is written into music that we play. So it's all, it's all user's choice. So as a section, we're often talking with each other, trying out instruments and saying, you know, what did you think about that? Or someone will say, that sounds good, but what about this? What if we tried this? And we're doing that every week in the section together. And that's, that's one of the things about a great percussion section is that it's 100% it's sound oriented. So you, you need a good collection of instruments. We have the orchestra's collection, but also individually, we bring all our own collections. So this was the drum break in an automobile. Um, and we, you know, we have a lot of them. We painted them black so they don't rust and rust all over our hands and our clothes. But I beams from a railroad, same thing. Sometimes an anvil part. These are the kinds of things that percussionists, you have to search for these sounds. It says anvil, but it might take a lot of time and at least a rehearsal to figure out the right sound you're using. These are the Zildjian Cymbal Company made some frying pans that you could mount on a cymbal stand. So a lot of this stuff, it sits here for a long time. It might sit here for a couple years, but then we play a piece of new music and it's, it's just the right sound and we have it available to us. We're uh, one of the few orchestras in the world fortunate enough to have this collection. Here's three of, I don't know if you can see all three, but there's three of our church bells. Um, most orchestras own none. The biggest orchestras might own two or three for specific repertoire. We own uh, 19. The biggest ones here, this is a G, G and C over there we use for Symphony Fantastique, which I think we're playing next season. These bells have artwork that's from various places around Severance Hall, Severance Center and, and Mandel Hall. Uh, there's the Lotus over here from Severance Hall on each bell, who the gift was from, which in the case of most of these bells was Bruce and Virginia Taylor. And it has the name of the orchestra and the name of the bell foundry and the year, and it's all in Latin. It's pretty, they're pretty amazing. This largest bell, they're unbelievably heavy, and the beaters, we have different size ones, but they're either bronze, like, like the bell, or they're steel. Um, and I won't play it too loud, but they're... I don't know if you can hear, it's a warmer attack with the bronze beater than the steel beater. And then, so that's the low G, here's the C. Two octaves up. And here's a C. These bells are cast at a foundry in the Netherlands. There used to be bell foundries all over the world and they've slowly sort of closed over the years because I guess there's less and less churches buying complete carillons. But um, this company has acquired a lot of these other foundries. So they have digital profiles of the bell that would have been made at the Whitechapel foundry in England, for instance. So they can make you that bell or they can make you their bell, or they can make you another bell, the same pitch, but the shape changes slightly and it changes the sound. So each one of our bells was picked out based on the repertoire that we play. So we have bells for Mahler 9, Shostakovich 11, Symphony Fantastique, also Sprach Zarathustra, and others, it, it goes on. But we have a, a long list of repertoire we can cover with, with real church bells, which is like, which is one of the most unique things I'd say in the percussion collection here. <laughs>